painting on a piece of masonite. I'm just checking sure to make sure that everything is dry and it's not tacky at all and it's nice and smooth. So the materials you'll need for this assignment will be listed below in the comments section. Uh, but you'll need you know basic paint, a lining brush, a template, uh, a couple medium-sized brushes, a bucket of water, and some charcoal. So to start, I'm going to take my template as I go over here and grab it. Now template size depends on what you're trying to do. This one's uh, just a regular medium one from some scrap around the shop. Uh, and what I'm lining it with is a piece of, ch of stick charcoal. You can use anything really uh, that you want. Uh, pencil, chalk, anything like that. And I'm just going to start by making squares. Making sure they're nice and even. Connecting them all together. Away I go. Now you'll see I have it all graded out. Now remember the bigger the squares the easier this is going to be. The smaller the much, a lot more work is going to be on your plate. I'm going to start by painting my two base colors. So I chose a green and a red for this. I'm just going to go over here start painting. Now I'm using Lucite paint which spreads pretty evenly. You can see here I'm using a lining stick to do my edging. This just speeds things up a little bit down the road. Uh, it allows you to get some nice clean edges right away. I like to use some molding or trim for my lining sticks, often because they're beveled so you can get a nice clean line. Now you can see I'm not quite to the edges on certain ones and I'm probably a little bit over the edges uh, on other squares. That will get fixed as we fill in the others with this reddish pink. You'll see occasionally too while I'm doing this is I have a rag that I'm cleaning off my lining stick because the paint can tend to get a little goopy on it. Keep things clean and tidy so you don't have to go back and waste time doing touch-ups later. So now I have all the squares finished, but in order to clean the edges up, I want to start adding some grout or some kind of indication lines throughout it. So I'm using a little bit longer aligning stick and some black paint. And I have my lining brush here. You want to make sure that your lining stick is straight, not too warped. Um, oftentimes using a piece of strap steel or if you have a T-square or something like that, that works really well too. And so what I'm doing here now is I'm lining up the lining stick uh, along the edge of the tile for where I want it to be. Now you can see I'm pointing at some of the colors bleeding out onto the red there on the far left. And when I put this grout line in, this will help to cover that up. You can see here I'm demonstrating making sure it's all nice and straight and not a warped piece of wood. Now, using my lining brush and the, an even amount of pressure across the whole stroke, I start adding in my lines. You want to make sure that your, your lining brush is pretty well primed with paint with a little bit of water cut into it so it has some nice viscosity. Not too watery so it doesn't bleed underneath the lining stick. Now 
Now you can see I have all of my grout lines lined in now. Now I could just stop right here and be done with it. Um, but I want to take it one next step further and start adding some highlights and lowlights. This will add more dimension to the tile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my base red and add a little black to it. Make it about a full step darker. As you can see, it's about a full step darker. And what we're going to do is just off to the edge of the grout line, we're going to add in a shadow line, about the same width as the grout line was. And you're going to hear me say this multiple times. You always want your highlights and lowlights to be in the same orientation. So with this one, I'm going to have my lowlights be in the bottom left corner. And then the highlights are going to be in the upper right. Now I'm going through. You can see adding in my lowlights. You can kind of see it right here as it's drying. Now you can see I'm just putting the lowlights for the red in the bottom left hand corner of all of the red squares. Now I'm doing uh, the highlight with the same red and adding some white to it so it's a full step brighter than the original red. And it's wash and repeat. So now I'm adding my highlights. And off I go. So you can see there's a highlight and a low light in here. This adds a little bit more three dimensionality to the tile. And when it's lit by the lighting designer, it'll add a lot more life to the paint treatment. You can see my paint is really thick in this. Um, I, what you don't see off screen is I'm cutting it with a little bit of water so it moves a little better on the pigment. Uh, you want your paint to be kind of the consistency of whole milk, not um, Elmer's glue, which this consistency is. So cutting it with some water will definitely help. Yes, this is entirely too thick a white paint. Once again, a full step brighter and a full step darker for the highlights and lowlights. So you can see here, I'm pointing out, uh, I have my lowlight in the bottom left hand corner and my highlights in the upper right hand corner. So I'm gonna do the same orientation with the green. So the low light right here, and then the highlight right there. Once again, just using some trim to, as my lining stick to go across. This one's a little shorter, so it's easier to manage than the one that I'd used my grout lines with. Once again, you can see the low light on the bottom left. Same with the red and the highlight on the upper right. So it's consistent across the entire paint treatment. Adding in my highlights for the green. All right, and just like that, we have a finished or almost finished tile floor. Now you could leave it like this and it'd be just fine. I like to add a little bit of spatter to it, which you'll see in a second. Um, I typically spatter just a little bit of the opposing colors. So I use the base green and the red and spattered them across the tile. That just kind of blends everything together a little bit more, makes it look a little bit more realistic, less cartoony. And I do a really fine spatter, not big watery puddles, just a really little spatter. You can see right there, some small little dribbles. And there you have it. 